the psychology of spending. Conquer impulse buys and control your cash. Ever found yourself standing at the checkout with a cart full of items and you didn't plan to buy? Well, let's say you're not alone. The average American spends over $5,000 a year on just impulse buys. I mean, that's a huge chunk of change. So, why do we do it? Why do we spend money on things we don't need, even when we know better? Understanding the psychology of spending. First, let's talk about impulse buying. It's that moment when you see something you didn't plan to buy, but you just have to have it. You know the feeling, right? You're walking through a store or scrolling through an online shop and something just catches your eye. It's not on your shopping list, but suddenly, you can't imagine leaving without it. That right there is impulse buying in action. Psychology suggests that impulse buying is often driven by feelings rather than logic. Maybe you're feeling a bit down and think a new purchase will cheer you up, or perhaps you're feeling celebratory and want to treat yourself. Either way, it's your emotions calling the shots. In today's world, we've kind of become accustomed to getting what we want, when we want it. And when we see something we want, we want it now. This desire for immediate satisfaction can also lead us to make impulsive purchases without considering the long-term consequences. But knowing why we spend impulsively is just half the battle. How do we fall into the trap of overspending? Interestingly, our brains are also wired with cognitive biases that can lead us to overspend. For example, the scarcity bias can make us rush to buy something because we're afraid it will run out. Companies are incredibly savvy at getting us to part with our hard-earned cash. We see a sign that says, only two left in stock, hey, limited time offers only, buy one, get one free, and suddenly, we're reaching for our wallets. It's a psychological trick that many marketers use to get us to spend more. Let's say you see a pair of shoes on sale for $50, marked down from $100. You don't need new shoes, but the deal seems too good to pass up, so you buy the shoes. But the catch is that if you hadn't made that purchase, you could have saved that $50. Over time, these small purchases can add up. If you spend $50 on unnecessary items every week, that's $2,600 a year. Quite a big saving. There's also the factor of social influence. Sadly, we live in a society where our worth is often measured by what we own. So we tend to buy things to fit in, to impress others, or because we see others with the same thing. It's a powerful force that can lead us to make purchases we might not make otherwise. Now, that we know how we fall into the trap, how do we get out of it? Creating a budget is one of the most effective strategies to control impulse spending. It tells you where your money is going and how to make better decisions about your spending. First of all, you need to track your income and expenses. Everything from your salary to your morning coffee. You might be surprised to find out how much you're spending on things you don't really need. Next. Categorize your expenses. This could be housing, food, entertainment, etc. This will give you a clear picture of where most of your money is going. For example, you might find out that you're spending a lot on dining out and decide to cook more at home. After that, try to set spending limits for each category. This is where you can really start to control your spending. If you know you have a $200 limit for entertainment, you'll think twice before buying that concert ticket. So, creating a budget is a great start. But what about those triggers that make you want to spend money impulsively? Another strategy is identifying those triggers. Could be anything from a stressful day at work to a sale at your favorite store. The first step to identifying your triggers is to pay attention to your spending habits. When do you tend to overspend? Is it when you're feeling stressed? Or maybe when you're out with friends? Once you've identified your triggers, you can start to manage them. Like if you know that you tend to overspend when you're feeling stressed, you can find other ways to cope with stress, like going for a run or meditating. 
It's also helpful to avoid situations that trigger your impulse spending. If you know that you tend to overspend at sales, just be honest with yourself and avoid them. Or if you tend to overspend when you're out with friends, suggest some activities that don't involve spending money. Developing awareness is another strategy you can try. Might sound simple, but it's actually a good tool for controlling impulse spending. How often do you make a purchase without really thinking about it? Maybe you're in the habit of buying a coffee every morning, or maybe you tend to add items to your online shopping cart without considering whether you really need them. But by developing awareness, you can start to break these habits. Start by paying attention to your spending. Notice when you're making an impulse purchase and take a moment to consider why. Are you bored? Are you trying to cheer yourself up or are you just following a habit? Once you know the reasons behind this, you can start to make changes. Many psychologists and experts in the field of personal finance have weighed in on the topic of impulse spending. Dr. April Benson, a psychologist and author of To Buy or Not to Buy, Why Do We Overshop and How to Stop, says that impulse buying is often a way to avoid uncomfortable feelings. She suggests finding other ways to cope with these feelings, such as talking to a friend or going for a walk. Moving on, let's just say you want to buy the things because they are necessary, but you also want to control your cash. Let's take a car for example. You might be tempted to buy a cheap car to save money up front. But if that car is unreliable and ends up needing expensive repairs, it could end up costing you more in the long run. A wise financial decision would be to invest in a reliable car that might be more expensive up front, but will save you money on repairs and maintenance over time. Another aspect of making wise financial decisions is considering the opportunity cost of a purchase. This is what you're giving up when you choose to spend money on one thing instead of another. Like if you spend $100 on a night out, that's $100 you can't put towards your savings or invest in your future. Making wise decisions is crucial, but how do we resist the urge to buy when faced with those irresistible flashy ads and marketing tactics? We live in a world where we're constantly bombarded with advertisements and sales pitches. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere you go, you see them. One common marketing tactic is the limited time offer. This creates a sense of urgency and makes us feel like we need to buy something right away or miss out. But let's be honest, there will always be another sale and another deal and another limited time offer. So don't let these tactics pressure you into making a purchase you'll regret. Another tactic is the buy one, get one free deal. This can make us feel like we're getting a bargain, but in reality, we're often spending more than we planned. Always ask yourself, do I really need two of this item? Would I buy it if it wasn't on sale? By being aware of their tactics and resisting the urge to buy, you can keep your money where it really belongs in your pocket or maybe in your bank account well that's it for today so have you tried any of these strategies do you have any tips or experience to share drop your comments below before you go don't forget to check out our recent video on credit score secrets six steps to achieving and maintaining excellent credit make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon thanks for watching